Okay, so let's start. Thank you everybody for attending this talk. Uh, my name is Frédéric Rosa. I work at SUSE uh, for almost six, six years now. And uh, for those who don't know me, uh, a long time ago I took care of pushing systemd in OpenSUSE. But these days I try to break less things. So I'm taking care of uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Desktop, and I'm the release manager there, and helping the other uh, SLI release manager. So today I will talk about um, bridging the gap between OpenSUSE and, and SLI. Uh, if you look at, uh, at the schedules, uh, it was bridging the gap between SLI and LEAP, and I just renamed the talk, because it's not really LEAP. Ludwig will talk about LIP later, but yeah. Uh, and the example will be around GNOME. So, what's the problem we are currently facing between SLI on one side and OpenSUSE on the other side? So, this talk will be mostly about uh, me speaking with a SLI hat, uh, still being an OpenSUSE contributor, but with the SLI perspective and how we can improve uh, our community participation in OpenSUSE. So, in the past, uh, for those of you who know, um, for SLI 12, uh, we call sometimes it SP0, so for the first release of SLI 12, we used uh, OpenSUSE factory as a basis, as a cost base after 13.1 was released which included GNOME 3.10. something, so 3.10.3. And based on this, uh, the, the desktop engineering uh, engineers at SUSE worked on fixing bugs. Bugs from customer, bugs found by our, our QA, bugs found by a lot of people. They also worked on uh, backporting feature, which were uh, in SLI 11 code base, because we have to maintain the feature set from previous enterprise product in the new releases. And we had to make sure that for our enterprise users, the user experience was similar. We can't change the user experience, but it still has to be uh, acceptable for enterprise users, which means that uh, for those of you who have used uh, GNOME 3, there is a radical changes, uh, there are radical changes in the user experience, basically GNOME Shell, which uh, sometimes is not really appreciated by everybody because it's really radical. So uh, GNOME, the GNOME people upstream uh, try to change this and allow this a different way of doing things, which is called GNOME Classic. But GNOME Classic was not suitable for us, for, for SUSE uh, Linux Enterprise Desktop, because it was still a two-panel uh, thing, thinging. You have a panel at the top and a panel at the bottom, a bit like Mac OS, if you, if you like. So we worked on something which would be similar to Slab, for people who remember SLI 11 and old OpenSUSE release. Uh, GNOME 2 had a panel at the bottom with a big menu, which was called Slab. And we worked on trying to get a user experience a bit similar to that, which is called SLI Classic. So this, this is, for instance, a feature which is, at the moment, only available in SLI 12. It's not available on OpenSUSE. We'll come to that later. So we had people, engineers, which work, who worked a lot on stabilizing and developing first stuff for GNOME, but for SLI, not for OpenSUSE. And which means that it was a huge work for the, the engineers, the developers, the QA, uh, to make this usable by, for enterprise customer. And which means that sometime, when you have a lot of work to do, uh, you have a tight schedule, 
<coughs> sorry, sorry, uh, because for uh, enterprise uh, distribution, we have deadlines and we really work hard to meet those deadlines. It's really much more difficult uh, to push deadlines compared to a community distribution. So sometimes our uh, SUSE engineers didn't always had the time to submit changes for to GNOME factory, which is not really good, but that's life. And also, we had also another problem, it's that GNOME factory was no longer on the same version of GNOME that we were working in SLI, because GNOME releases a new version every six months. We were stuck in, in a, on the release 3.10 dot something, but factory was already on 3.11 dot something. Which means that for our engineers, if they wanted to port their fixes, their new feature to OpenSUSE, it means the, doing the work twice. One time for, for SLI, 12, and another time, sometimes reread, rewrite everything, for, for OpenSUSE, and again, tight schedule means we didn't have time to do that. We said, oh, we will do that later. Also, we didn't have OpenQA when we worked on SLI 12 SP0. It was still in, in the infancy. It was starting to be used uh, for Tumbleweed. Uh, there was not even Tumbleweed at, at that time. I mean, the one we know today as Tumbleweed, it was a great KH Tumbleweed. So, we focused on making SP, uh, SLI 12 SP0 rock solid, and yeah, we will take care of upstreaming the work later. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was the past. So what's the problem? The problem is that life continues. Uh, even when you, have, when you release a product, SLI 12 SP0, we still had to do, or people had to do their day-to-day -day job, meaning fixing bugs coming from support. Um, Forstly 11, Forstly 11 Service Pack 3, uh, or SLI 12 SP, SP0. They had to work on the new Service Pack for SLI 11. They have to take care of um, also security fixes when the security team asks us, ask the engineer to help. Etc. 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 So we said, okay, we'll do that for SLI 12 SP1 because it's a stabilization release. We should have enough time to upstream our work. Eh, no, no, because we re really wanted to, again to do a rock solid distro and working just to stabilize the code because after you release a product, even if you have a lot of beta testing, a lot of bugs are discovered once the, the distro is out. We know that, it's true for SLI, it's true for OpenSUSE. People test code not during beta test, they test after it's released and then they start to complain. We know that. So we, after that, we do a new service pack after a year to fix bugs. And again, yeah, People were too busy to upstream the, their work on OpenSUSE, and we are we were at this point where we had 3.10. something uh, with a lot of bug fixes, some feature in the SLI 12 code, code stream on one side, and we had Leap or OpenSUSE Factory Tumbleweed on the other side, which was much more, which was running much more recent code. And we weren't really happy because, um, yeah, it's, it's not something good to do. Um, even in the open source, uh, open source uh, world, it's something which everybody knows. It's not something you should do. You can do it for a while, but you shouldn't do that in the long term because it's not sustainable. So we wonder, what can we do with Service Pack 2? So, from the beginning, for Service Pack 2, we decided to sync again with OpenSUSE. And 
in a agile uh, jargon, reimburse our technical debt. So for people doing scrums or any kind of agile method, they, they will know what, what it means. It's those funky uh, buzzwords. Um, so we, and also things changed on the open source side of the world. After SLE 12 SP0 was released, um, and after SP1 was released, uh, OpenSUSE decided to create a new distro, OpenSUSE Leap, based on uh, the SLE code, code base. So maybe we, by we, again I have my SLE hat, uh, SUSE, SUSE's desktop team, we have two teams. Uh, maybe the, the desktop team at SUSE could work with the open SUSE GNOME team. And maybe we could work in, in good intelligence and collaborate to make sure that the work we do on, at SUSE can benefit everybody, not just um, the SLE customer, the SUSE customer, but also the community at large. So, that was one thing we had in mind. And the other was, uh, for Service Pack 2, we, with our product uh, management uh, people, we decided to upgrade the desktop stack, which is something that in the past was not really done during Service Pack at SUSE. It was done one or two times during SLE 11, but usually, <coughs> sorry, Sorry for your ears. Um, usually that's something uh, in the past we were less doing, uh, changing things during service pack, but yeah, so now we change kernel, even upgrade kernels to major releases as service pack. So it's like, as my boss said, it's like changing the engine in a, in a flight while you are flying. Yeah, okay, we can do that. So why not upgrade the desktop? So the plan was to upgrade the desktop stack. We were unsure. GNOME 3.18 or 3.20? Yeah, we were unsure. So we talked with the OpenSUSE GNOME team and told them what was our plan. We wanted to upgrade the desktop. We wanted to, um, and we wanted to know what they were planning to do for their next leap release. Next leap release meaning the one which is going to happen in October, November this year, 42.2. Maybe we could work together. Maybe we could make sure that we use the same source code for the next service pack and the next leap. That could be nice. So, we had to choose which version of GNOME to pick for Service Pack 2 and for Leap. We had two, two options, 3.18 at the time, so it was end of last year, to give you a rough idea, 3.18 was already released. It was already in Tumbleweed, which means OpenQA was running on it, people were already using it. Um, yeah, it's released, we could do use that. Um, it would be easy, because it's already there. But it would mean that if we do bug fixes, um, because we do, <laughs> when we test stuff, um, we would need to carry those bug fixes for a while until they are merged upstream. On the other hand, if you start working on a code base which is not released upstream yet, if you send your patches and they are merged, when the stable uh, product is released by upstream, you don't even have to maintain your patch. They are already upstreamed. So we had 3.10 at that time. It was not yet released. We were, yeah, something like November, December last year. But 3.20 was not released. It was still in development. But it would be probably the release the OpenSUSE leap people would take. 
So on one side, we had something which would be already release stable, but on the other side, we had something which would be released soon, but not yet, not yet. But it would be used by OpenSUSE. And the con side of using 320 is that it would be released stable by the upstream community shortly before we start the beta cycle of, of SP2. So it would mean the schedule would be a bit, a bit tight. So what did we do? We were unsure. We knew that 3.18 was already in Tumbleweed, so we could test that. It was easy. We, we prepared a battle plan. We created um, a mirror on our build service, building on SLE 12, the next GNOME version. So the OpenSUSE GNOME team is always packaging the next version of GNOME, which is in development, in a repo which is called GNOME Next. And thanks to the uh, OBS uh, feature, we were able to basically follow the GNOME Next project, but rebuild it not on top of OpenSUSE Leap or on top of Tumbleweed, but on top of SLE 12. And this way, we were able to detect all the things which would break because, yes, there is a dependency on a new software which we don't have in SLE 12. So we, were, we would either need to in, integrate it, upgrade it, sometimes it's just we need a new version, or we would disable the feature. But with that, after a while, we were able to have a uh, Open SUSE version of GNOME built on SLE 12, SP1. When we did that, we would could install it on top of SLE 12 and test it. Yes, it works fine. So we have a code base, which is okay, which works fine, which doesn't integrate all the work that was done by the SUSE people on, us, on GNOME 3.10, but that's okay. We have time to do the backport. Mm, okay, so we decided, yes, we'll go to 320, GNOME 320. Then we decided also to mimic what the GNOME people in OpenSUSE are doing right now. And GNOME people, but I would say, I could say all the uh, packager and contributor on OpenSUSE uh, factory are doing which is using a devil project. So if you have already contributed to, to factory, you know that you never submit something directly to factory. You have to branch from a devil project. You get your changes integrated in the devil project and from there you send the changes from the devil project to factory. And we decided to start to do, doing that for GNOME. Uh, internally for SLE 12 SP2. So we set up a devil project and we decided also to have peer review between our desktop developers. When they submit something, somebody else in the team is going to review what they did. And if they are okay with that, then it will be submitted to the SLE 12 code stream where the release manager and the uh, project manager will review the, the code before accepting it. And we also had a huge task among, uh, in front of us. We had to rebase about something like 300 packages. And yeah, that was a challenge. I can say that. Okay, updating 300 packages. Yeah, that's easy. Okay, it's simple except that you had to check the difference in the code base between what you had in SLE 12, so GNOME 3.10 plus the feature we created plus the bug fix until today, and on the other, high, on the other side, you had GNOME 3.20, 3.19, 3.20 code base, meaning all the changes that went 
in OpenSUSE since the day we branch Fossley 12 until now in OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And of course, we also had to push, if possible, the patches, the feature upstream. No, because again, our goal is not to keep the code we write for us, but making sure it's available to everybody, because in the long term, it's easier to maintain. Okay, so that's a battle plan. Was it a success? Mm, not entirely. So, for the beta one of Service Pack 2, we were able to get GNOME 3.20.1 in. So, it was difficult until the last minute, but we were able to get it in. So, this part, we can say it was a success. But again, due to time constraint, we weren't able to push back to OpenSUSE all the changes resulting from the merge of the Sleet 12 code base and the Tumbleweed code base by Beta 1. So now we are still in the beta, uh, beta test phase of uh, SP2. And we are really discussing heavily between the SUSE developer on one side and the open SUSE GNOME team. And why didn't we succeed? Okay. Have you ever tried to submit a dot changes to GNOME factory with trailing spaces in the change log? Say we'll reject that. Say check for typos. Say check for a dot at the end of a sentence. They check for capitalization of phrases, of sentence. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, but that was not the real problem. Um, it's just that the rules, uh, the guidelines for contributing to GNOME Factory takes a lot of uh, time to, to learn. And yeah, so our people, our SUSE people are learning that, but they are not that there yet. We are working on that. <coughs> so next step. We really, 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 really want to merge our service pack to change to factory and do it now. Not in six months. Um, so, with the help of the OpenSUSE GNOME team, um, since now the code base of Service Pack 2 is uh, available in OBS, everybody can look at it. We sync it for each beta uh, release, every, every milestone. So the OpenSUSE GNOME team was able to look at the code stream for, for the Service Pack 2, make some comments. Oh yes, there, you are doing crazy stuff, don't do it or do it in a different way. Um, and now we are working together on making sure that we close the gap between OpenSUSE and, and SLE, so that when we do changes to a code, sometimes we will make the changes available on OpenSUSE because it's relevant. It's a, if it's a bug fix, obviously everybody wants it. Sometimes it's more a design decision, which is all because we have a use case which are reduced compared to OpenSUSE. So we focus on one thing, we change a behavior, and sometimes changing this behavior is okay in an enterprise uh, world, but not in an OpenSUSE world. So in that case, maybe we will ship the, the patch, but we won't apply it when building for, for OpenSUSE. And our ultimate goal is for um, the next leap and service pack two to have the same source package. So the SRPM should be the same, but building those might result in different binary packages because sometimes we will not enable some feature on OpenSUSE or on, on leap, on, on SLEE. And the good thing is that 
the open source GNOME team really want us to succeed for a selfish reason. If they use the same source as SP2, they won't have to take care of the maintenance of GNOME for the next leap because it will be inherited from Service Pack 2, meaning we, the desktop guys at SUSE, will take care of the maintenance. I'm sure they will help us, but no, he's saying no in the back. <laughs> I know him. Um, but seriously, this means that we, again, community and SUSE will be able to work together on maintaining a high quality uh, environment for the desktop. And right now, we just have 54 packages remaining, which includes Slee Classic, but don't worry, it will be there. And we even have a stretch goal, um, getting more packages available for Slee 12 customer. So this is not strictly speaking about um, GNOME this time, but we have another project, which is called open to the backport, or sometimes you, you read about package hub. Scott Balling will talk about that on Friday. So 2.30 in the afternoon, if the schedule is respected, <laughs> not sure. And I can tell you that if you are using Sleet 12 SP1, since this Monday, we have KDE 5 available for Sleet 12 SP1, which is something people have been asking for. So again, this is something where community and SUSE work hand to hand to hand, and yeah, we really want to increase that. Yep. Oops. And with that, questions or maybe reactions, you can throw me tomatoes if you want. Oh, one question, Takashi. Okay, turn on the mic, might work better. Yes. Oh, oh yeah, um, the question, my question is, uh, what happens in, after the re release of SP2 and the 42 So which, whether IBS or OBS will be um, based of the maintenance packages? So, um, we have the, strict rules at IBS. So for those people who are not working at, in, at SUSE, we have another build service which is internal, which is we call IBS, which is private, where we build SLE 12. And so how we are going to handle maintenance, I would say we will handle it uh, just, just like we do right now. It will be handled internally because for packages in LIP which are the same as in uh, in SLE 12, the work is done internally and then when the uh, maintenance team, the open source maintenance team and the SUSE maintenance team decided to release the package, then it's available outside. But we are able to fetch changes from OBS. So if a community member do a bug fix for a package, uh, he can make it available for us to pick on OBS and we'll just pick the changes, push that in IBS, and then it will be pushed through the regular maintenance channel to, on one side, SLE 12 SP2, and on the other side, the next leap. We really want to prevent divergence, code divergence, just like we had, um, and yeah. Other questions? No, we are a bit late compared to the schedules. I still have 30 seconds. No, okay. Thank you. And I guess Ludwig is going to talk about clip now.